So um, now that we have uh, created uh, our VCFs, so we have created a, a genomics uh, DB, and out of that genomics DB, we have uh, extracted the VCF containing all of the variants in our trio. So basically all of the variants in our in our cohort. Um, now it's time uh, to uh, separate the um, the real variants, the real existing variants, from the false or positives. And that is not a very trivial task. So just to show you where we are in the workflow, um, we have gone through all the mapping. We have created, sorry, the GVCS. We have added those GVCS in um, a database, so consolidated them, and then we did a joint call. So we extracted uh, all of the information out of the database. And now we have a uh, one VCF containing all of the variants in, in our cohort. So now we basically have raw SNPs and indels, and we need to, to filter those. But how are we going to filter them? So there is quite a bit of uh, quality control information uh, we can use. For example, uh, you, you can imagine that we make more mistakes when at, in regions where we have low uh, mapping quality, so where the aligner wasn't sure whether a read belongs at that uh, position, uh, yes or no. Uh, for example, also if we have a very little support uh, in terms of depth, so read depth for a certain region, uh, we might uh, consider to remove uh, the variance because we do not have enough uh, uh, read support or um, consider that the genotypes may be wrong. Um, <clears throat> there is also, there might also be situations where a uh, certain region is only sequenced from, let's say, only uh, one strand and not the other strand, that that might also point to uh, mistakes uh, in, in the variant call. Um, general uh, Variant quality can also tell you something about the quality of the variant. Obviously, that's the main main idea, uh, and so on. So we have many different uh, quality uh, measures that we can use to do uh, filtering. So what you could do is just say, okay, uh, for each of those. Uh, quality measures, I'm going to set a maybe a minimum and or a maximum threshold, and we're just going to filter for that. However, it can be possible that you, let's say we have, uh, if we have two quality measures, um, we might have two sweet spots in there, meaning that if quality measure A is high, quality measure B has to be a little bit lower. However, if you have a low uh, uh, value for quality measure A, but a high value for quality measure B, you also have uh, a lot of uh, correct variant calls. And that is very difficult um, to actually um, to actually have if you do hard filtering, if you set really strict thresholds on, on individual quality measures. So because us humans uh, cannot really do that, uh, we can also ask the computer to do that. So basically taking all of those uh, quality measures into account into a, a, a model, a statistical model, or you could also call it machine learning if you want. Um, and, and then let this model try to estimate which variant would be a true positive and which variant would be a false positive. So this model needs to be uh, trained and applied. Um, uh, with JTK, uh, you can use the variant quality score recalibration measure uh, um, program uh, to do that. However, you need a pretty big data set to be able uh, to do that. So basically what you can do is, of course, say we have fixed thresholds, but then we miss this sweet spot where we have a low value for quality measure A, but relatively high value for quality measure B. Uh, so uh, variant quality score recalibration has a uh, better performance uh, in terms of finding uh, true uh, positives um, compared to, to hard filtering setting, uh, hard threshold. But uh, you will need a, a true set, meaning a set of variants that are 
actually there, uh, should be there in, in your cohort and a relatively large data set uh, you work with. So basically the cutoff would be uh, either one, at least one whole genome. So a uh, whole, uh, whole genome resequencing or 30 whole exome. So that's that's a relatively uh, large, large set. Um, so if we are going to uh, evaluate how well we did uh, with uh, filtering our variants, uh, we want to have some evaluation uh, measures. Um, so this is just a recap for what we mean with precision and recall. Um, so with precision, um, we mean how many of the uh, selected variants were uh, true variants. So do we have a lot of uh, false positives in there, yes or no? And recall would be how many of the two variants were selected. So were we missing um, variants? So to check with you, I have a question regarding exactly that. Um, Firefox. Firefox over here. So let's say we are going to apply very strong filtering. So we are going uh, to remove relatively a lot of, of variants. So what will we end up with? So will we, where will we gain mostly? Do we get a high precision, low recall, low precision, high recall, and so on? So as a reminder, I can share my screen with the PowerPoint slide. That's better. There we go. So precision is how many of the selected variants were true variants, and recall how many of the true variants were selected. Okay, I think most of you have answered. Okay, so the people who answered, <laughs> which were eight of you, <laughs> not, not all of you participated, but first of the people who have answered said high precision, lower recall, and indeed that's, that's the correct answer. Because if you do strong filtering, uh, you expect that more of your variants contain uh, true uh, positive, relatively so you get rid of false positives but you might uh, remove also uh, through positives by this strong filtering so your recall will be uh, lower <laughs> 